Yay for always filming when the sun is not up. <laughs> the quest for good lighting continues. Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Marlo York, and today I wanted to talk about my book. <laughs> Imagine that. So I've noticed that this tag has been going around the AuthorTube community for a little bit, and I wanted to try it myself. It is called the Behind the Book tag, which was created by Mandy Lynn, who is also an author tuber, and she recently released a book called She's Not Here, which sounds freaking interesting, and I would like to read it. <laughs> so there are four questions in this tag, and I am going to go ahead and answer them regarding my self-published debut novel, Blood of Fire. Are you in the shot? Question I ask every single time. <laughs> So the first question is, what is my book about and what genre is it? Blood of Fire is a young adult dystopian fantasy novel. And describing what it is about is actually the most difficult thing for some reason. Comment below if you also have a difficult time describing concisely what your novel is about. It actually took me a pretty long time to finalize the back cover blurb. And even that I feel like doesn't completely describe everything that happens in the book, but I mean, you don't want to give everything away, so that kind of makes sense. The Blood of Fire is about a 17-year-old girl named Valiri, and she lives in a peaceful farming village that is one day completely carpet-bombed by her ruling government, which is just called the city. Right after her village is destroyed and pretty much everyone she knows is either killed or captured or runs away, she is captured by a rival clan called the Grakir. Her entire life, she was told that the Grakir people are just a savage race who have the power to control godlike beasts. And during her time captured amongst these people, she actually discovers that the city she once held so near and dear is not quite what it seems. She also realizes that she is the last of an ancient race of Fiero who have the power to control and create fire. During her time that she is captive, she has to learn how to not only assimilate into this clan, but to become someone who is strong enough and respected enough to venture out into her own and eventually find her lost sister who disappeared during the attack on her village. And there's some other stuff that happens that involves animal gods and learning about how society for them differs from the one that we have now, and yet we realize they're not that different. They're actually very similar in some ways, though intentionally exaggerated on my part. Oh my god, phone, this is not the time to be lagging. Jim and a cricket. Question number two. Was my story inspired by anything in real life? Not initially. I've always been inspired by the idea of misfit characters or just misfits in general, especially ones that have special powers. For instance, um, X-Men is actually the only like comic book franchise, movie franchise. I I'll admit, I've only watched the movies, I didn't read the comics. Not that I wouldn't, or that I'm against that, but I just really like the movies. I also really like the idea of elements. Um, I was very into astrology when I was younger, and I am a fire sign. Sagittarius! <laughs> I'm also a fire sign in the Chinese zodiac. Goat! Slash sheep. And so fire is my favorite element. That's why I wanted a protagonist that has the power over fire, but as we discover, there are other clans, potentially, that have other powers. Hmm? As I continued further developing my story, um, the election in which Donald Trump was up for election was happening, and so our world, especially in the United States, was thrown into a lot of political bullshit. And regardless of whose side you're on or who you voted for, you can't deny that there was a lot of political turmoil going on. And so this sort of inspired the uh, political undertones of totalitarian government ruling over people and all the terrible things that can happen when power corrupts people. So it wasn't initially inspired by anything specific, but there were definitely real life influences that helped progress the story as things went along. Question three, why did I start writing the story? Because I had an idea in my head and it was just clawing to get out. That's pretty much the case with most of my stories. I have an idea, it just keeps itching and scratching and tingling in the back of my brain, and eventually I just need to get it on paper. And number four, what do I hope to make readers think or feel? My novel deals a lot with the idea of subjugating people, whether it's a different race or, or gender. I mean, the book specifically deals with different clans, which signify different races. So if I wanted people to feel or think anything in regards to it, I would want them to think about the way that we act towards other people, people who are different from us, whether it's the way they look, the way they behave, race, gender, inserts, 
group slash label here, and I would want them to think more about that we shouldn't constantly try to shove each other into boxes and that we should really work together. I do want people to take a little bit of political commentary away from it, but that's not really the overarching theme here because I'm not really big on politics. For one thing, it doesn't interest me and it really is complicated when you really get into it. But I do like the idea of, even if it's not a government that we're talking about ruling over others, I think this book will showcase the idea of what can happen when one person or one group decides that they deserve more power over another group or groups. Yes, some of the things may seem a little abrupt or exaggerated in the sense that I wanted to take the worst possible traits of like a totalitarian government and throw them in and kind of see what happens, especially things like genocide and censorship and, you know, book burnings, you know, just basically ways that people, that governments especially, try to control the people and hopefully we can see that those things aren't really good and no, I'm not saying we should try to overthrow our government in any way, shape, or form, but to be more conscious of the way that we perceive power and that we shouldn't try to overrule other people or segregate people because of blank, because they are blank, because we choose to label them as blank and therefore see them as less than or someone else as more than. Does that make any sense? That sounded awfully rambly. We'll see if we can clean it up in post. <laughs> Kind of doubt it. So that was the behind the book tag created by Mandy Lynn. I really enjoyed it. I enjoy talking about my book and I hope that it sort of piqued your interest in my book because the book is available in paperback on Amazon and on Kindle, which is also through Amazon, but you can use your Kindle device to get the book. Oh my god, I'm tired. <laughs> my brain is just popcorn ready to burst. I hope you enjoyed listening to my version of this book tag, and if you would like to do it yourself, I tag you, viewer. <laughs> so if you have a book on the shelves, or if you are currently working on something, it doesn't have to be published for you to participate in this tag, go for it. Until next time, see you later!